throughout these first couple of weeks, has there been anything, I know it's kind of minuscule at this moment, but anything that's exceeded your expectations since you started practice? Um, the main thing that would probably stick out to me is just uh, the guy's ability to, obviously from last year, coming from a huddle, uh, listen to the call from quarterback every time, breaking the huddle, uh, getting to the line. Uh, their ability to pick up on the signals and be able to move a lot faster on offense. Uh, it's been really good to see. Uh, basically, been this spring so far, uh, a bunch of no huddle. Um, everybody's looking to the sideline, getting their job done, and uh, people getting their lined up fast, and uh, it's been really good to see that. What were your emotions when we had left? I mean, obviously, you came here and part of the play of the offense, and it's gone, and there's some uncertainty about what they're going to do. How was that process for you? Um, obviously, when the, the, the first couple talks started happening or seeing it on Twitter or whatever, uh, kind of like, dang. Like, uh, but obviously, football's a business. And uh, by then, I'd been thrown with some of the wideouts and some of the tight ends and running backs. And I was like, dang. Like, I mean, uh, Coach, Co- Coach Cohen's leaving. Obviously, that, that, that's part of it. But as long as we don't come in and run the triple option next year, I think we'll be able to do all right. Uh, so just seeing some of those guys catch the ball and some of the running backs out of the backfield, the tight ends making plays. So just felt a lot better about that. Um, just we were going to trust Coach Stoops that whoever he brought in was going to be the right guy. What were your, what are your early relationships with Coach Hamlin? Uh, the relationship with Coach, with Coach, with Coach Hamlin has been great so far. Um, basically, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's really tough on us, and uh, that's what we're looking for. But, and again, he's, he's good with us off the field, and uh, we want to build that relationship. Um, so that's something you're always looking for. Um, he's hard on everybody, which is great. Uh, he tells you exactly what he wants, and if it's not how he wants it, then he's going to tell you that too. So uh, just just really respect him and what he does, and I'm really liking the offense so far. How's the chemistry been with the other players? Do you feel like you've been cooking pretty well with them? Oh, <clears throat> uh, yes, ma'am. The chemistry has been pretty good. Sorry, that was kind of... <laughs> <laughs> Coach Stoops sounded like he's a little annoyed that you guys are getting the ball down the field. <laughs> yes, sir. That's not always a bad thing. Uh, those guys are definitely getting open for sure, uh, doing a great job up front. Uh, backs are doing good in protection, getting out as well when they need to, and uh, just trying to do my job and distribute the ball to those guys. We know a lot about Barry Young and Dane, but anybody else in that receiver room that's maybe surprised you that stepped up this week? Uh, yes, sir. There's definitely been a, a couple guys that are stepping up, making plays. Uh, AB is a name that just jumped straight to my head. I had a great couple plays today. Um, uh, those guys are doing well. Uh, they're doing everything they're asking them to do, but mainly um, those guys that I'm rolling with are, are just doing everything they're asked to do and catching the ball and, and getting open, which is makes my job a lot easier. Is there anything you do like off the field with the receivers or anything to try to just build that chemistry as you head into this year? Uh, so basically right now there's not too much because we're here every day. Sure, we got sure. class. We got practice on Saturday. And then obviously Sunday go to church and uh, basically just – kind of recover for another six day week. So nothing right now, but we'll definitely get into that a little bit this summer. Uh, some of the guys have been wanting to go fishing a little bit, golfing a little bit. So we'll uh, we'll try to see if, if, that, if that's something we can't work out. Really early, but what do you think fans will notice about pace of play in the <clears throat> offense? Uh, I think the pace of play will obviously uh, pick up. Uh, Eli, the other day in the locker room, he sits right beside me and uh, He's like, dude, I, I I don't know if I like it yet. He's like, I feel like we're doing two minute every play. I said, dude, this isn't even fast. Like, this is <laughs> this is normal stuff, and because uh, we're just running normal up tempo offense, and uh, it was great to see today. Um, uh, we actually had like a little team period at the end, scrimmage ish. Uh, so being able to get up and get the signals and move the ball down the field was really well and or really good. And uh, those guys definitely are. Eli told me that a couple weeks ago. He's he's gotten a lot better about it now, and he's he's great. He's getting up there. He's making the points. He's doing his stuff, and uh, that helps us be able to move faster. And he's doing a great job up front. How's the helmet communication been for you this kind of The helmet communication is pretty sweet. Uh, so basically, um, we signal uh, to all of our skill guys and running back and. Uh, the helmet communication is Coach Hamden just telling me to play. Um, <clears throat> if there's anything, alerts or any checks I need to know, he'll tell me that as well. And then um, basically everyone else is looking at the signal. I'll tell the O-line their job, uh, whether it's protection or run play, uh, snap count. And then 
basically just run it from there. So I don't even really have to look to the sideline unless there's a, a check that's late after the mic cuts off or something or if there's uh, any technical difficulties. So making sure I still know the signals as well in case something like that does happen. Some people would joke that cornerbacks might not like their coach in their area. <laughs> <laughs> any, any part of that that's negative out there? There's been some previous coaches I would not have liked in my ear. But uh, Coach Hamden, he's, he's been great so far. And uh, he's, he's making sure he just tells me to play uh, any duties or responsibilities for that play and just leave him at that because – because it, it really is a mental game at the quarterback position, and you want to make sure that you're really not overthinking stuff, just playing ball, making each play as easy as it can be, as simple as it can be. All right, if this happens, where am I going? If this happens, what's my check? Stuff like that. So he's done a great job of doing that. Will it be refreshing to not look over there and see the cartoons and the, the graphics and ever trying to play that spy game with the defense? Yeah, it's definitely something to uh, it'd be able to keep my eyes down the field a little better. Um, being able to see what, how they're moving, how they're lining up, and basically not me having to look at a signal for five to, to eight to ten seconds. Uh, so I'm just hearing it. I'm seeing what's going on, thinking about what I'm going to do, making get make sure guys are lined up because, I mean, I get the stuff basically before the signal even starts. So he's we're all in the same headset. He's saying it. They're starting the signals. They're getting the boards ready, and I hear it. All right, Chip, or all right, Demi. Like, they're wanting, yeah, they're wanting you to start out of the backfield ear ear. So it's just really sweet to be able to do that stuff. Um, and it's something I really enjoyed so far. You mentioned summer, and you've gone through summer work independent of the coaches and all that before, but this is the first summer where you are very likely to start a quarterback. Does that make things any different? How will that be? Um, no, sir. Uh, wouldn't be too much different, uh, ex except for just maybe taking the lead on some stuff. Uh, summers were really intense, uh, obviously, at Georgia. Um, just being there, making sure you're throwing with the guys, watching film when you can, and, and you are the coach on the field in the summer. So making sure you can soak up, even though it might be a minuscule detail to like a wide out or something that I don't even really need to know, making sure I do pick up on some of that stuff uh, now. So that way we're able to carry those habits and good habits and build those good habits in the summer. So summer is something that we'll definitely be able to <clears throat> take a jump in that area, in that arena, because in spring you only have a certain amount of time you can be on the field, a certain amount of time the coach can be out there, so there's only a certain amount of plays you can run. And then in the summer it's obviously beyond our time, uh, so that will be something that's pretty unique. And maybe the only thing different about me, like we, what you were saying, is that I, I might be the one that sends the text. That's it. So uh, <laughs> just go out there and go go, go get ready to get some Ron, work. Ron, you've already answered a few questions about like the play calling, how that comes in. How much flexibility do you have right now to, to make your own checks, your own calls, or do you just have to call? Do you have to run whatever play is called in right now because you're still learning playbook? Um, so basically right now there's uh, we're starting to get into a little bit more of that as uh, he's starting to trust the quarterback room and uh, tell us what he's wanting and what he's looking for. So if he calls a play and you can't even run that play, then you don't need to check to another play. So like we're making sure that we're, we're running the plays he's calling. And then against certain looks, certain coverages, certain pressures, we're definitely going to any alert some stuff. And that will be just done between the quarterback and the wideout. So that's pretty unique. Um, and then that's what I was saying earlier with the communication is, hey, alert, we're looking for this. So it's really cool to be able to just have that little reminder right at the start. Like, all right, if this happens, then i got to make sure I get us into this. So it's not all on me as it was whenever you just had signals. So you kind of get those little reminders in between every play, which is pretty unique. You're coming from a background of uh, having some really <clears throat> elite tight ends to, to work with. Uh, what are you seeing from your guys here who have played a lot of snaps, have some experience, and, and how are they looking early in the spring? So the tight end room as a whole, they've been rotating a bunch. Uh, I just can't complain with any of them. They're, they're getting open, they're big and physical, which is something that is uh, it's, it's very unique at the tight end position, being able to just be fast and physical. And uh, those guys are doing a great job, whether that's pass protection, getting open. And uh, just Coach Hammond is using them a lot in this offense, and that's something that's pretty good for them, uh, being able to get open. And uh, they're doing a great, great job overall. What have you seen from the running backs this spring so far? Uh, the running backs have been a great room as well. Uh, basically, just hitting stuff. Today we uh, we had like a simulated uh, team third down uh, or team period, and we had a couple third downs in there. And uh, <clears throat> basically, we we're just getting in the huddle, like something that is new ish for this offense is getting this huddle, and uh, we're getting in there. Hey guys, it's third and two. All right, we're gonna run power. Okay, we're calling this guy's number. O line, do your job. This guy's got to get two yards. So, and I think we did pretty well on third downs today, and it's great seeing those guys uh, getting out of the backfield. They're picking up checks really fast. They're being able to get out when they can, and they're staying in when they have to. So, uh, the running back room as a whole has been really well as well. I mean, does every quarterback prefer no huddle versus huddle, or there, do you see a lot of pros from coming out of huddle sometimes? Um, I think the only thing that basically comes to my mind, and uh, 
because I've been no huddle my whole life. Uh, the only thing that really comes to mind is pros and cons of a huddle is just basically looking those guys in the eye. Every play, I need this from you, like building that trust, getting that command. And that's something that you're really working on whenever you do huddle maybe one every 30 plays, 20 plays, whatever that is. So just making sure that you, you still hold that command at the quarterback position and that they trust you, you trust them, everyone's on the same page. And I think that's that's an attribute to being to building that in meetings and off the field whenever you don't huddle every play and you don't have that unique connection looking at each other, guys in the eye every play. So is Coach, is Coach Hammond's offense even closer to what you ran at Georgia, or is it still an adjustment like what Liam was doing at Georgia? Uh, you're saying, like, is it similar? Is to, it closer to what Liam's offense was to what you ran at Georgia or towards? Uh, I would say it was it was pretty similar to, like, what we did at Georgia. Uh, some of the concepts are – I mean, everybody runs the same concepts across football. Uh, they just call it something different. So just uh, everything's been pretty – I mean, it hasn't been a huge transition is, 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 is the main thing. And uh, it's been pretty easy to grasp. Um, everyone has five-man pro, everyone has six-man pro. So it, it's not a world of difference, and that's something that's been really helpful to me is being able to take some stuff or take some, hey, this is how I read this play or this is how Coach Hamden wants us to read this play and be able to put, put those into action here. How far had you gotten into Liam's playbook before? Like, were you like, oh, studied all this stuff and not, not going to use any yeah. of that? That's uh, that that is something that was kind of like, dang, that kind of stinks. <laughs> but uh, like, I would be sitting doing my playbook. Uh, Could have been doing a bunch of other stuff, obviously. <laughs> but uh, learning that playbook, I, I think I got to install five or six. So that's basically finished. But uh, <laughs> being able to learn that offense is pretty unique, and being able to. I'll be able to watch on Sundays now and say, hey, I know what that is. So uh, there's pros and cons to it. And then obviously when you get in the league, there's really or, – or if I'm fortunate enough to play in the league, there's only six or seven different systems that are ran, and that's obviously one of them. So it's, it's not a bad thing I did pick up on that, that stuff. Coach Wolford mentioned an emphasis on running downhill. You just mentioned repping a third and two power play. Just how much have you seen that help the guys up front the offense line as they try to get back to the standard they've set themselves? Yeah. Uh, those, those guys are doing great. Uh, they're moving people well. Um, uh, just no complaints from them. Our, the pass pro has been great, and, and that's always great for an O-line. Like, hey, it's third and two. We're running power. We could be doing some some trick and dick and play and try to hear, 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 but no, we're going to run power. We need two yards. We're calling y'all's number. Two yards, let's get it. So uh, just building that confidence in those guys, and it's great to see the dude bust it for a big play and uh, always a confidence booster for them and making sure you're patting them on the back, telling them they're doing a great job as well. All right, thanks, bro. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Thank you all. Question for Max. Max, uh, Mark was saying the, the receiver group, you know, Dan and Barry on being a little more consistent as they just continue to mature. What have you going up against them each and every day? Is super fun. Oh yeah, they they I feel like they've been getting better every day. You know, I love going against them because it's helping me with my game, and I feel like that they really are taking that next step. And this showed early in the spring, and I know they only get better from here on out. Thanks, I asked Coach White the other day about those other corners who got thrust into it at the end of the ball game and we all were hurt and going well. And he mentioned the way you responded to that game and don't play the year before. How do you think those guys can build on that experience and have you maybe told them a little bit about how, how you did that? Well, you know, being a corner is always have a short memory, but you know, having something that happened to you that leaves a bad taste in your mouth going into that following year, it's on your conscience. And you know, I just tell those guys like, we working every day, you know, Nobody's perfect. This is a, this is a sport where you know stuff happens, it's ups and downs. So I just tell them like, just put the work in, man. It, it pays off, and you know I think that they've done that this you know this first couple or two weeks of spring ball, and I'm excited to see the growth. Anybody in that group particularly impressed you so far? Uh, I say JD has really popped off, and I say that he's becoming more vocal. You know, it's his second year in the in the program, so I feel like he's he's adjusting very well, and you know I get excited playing out there with him because he's gonna bring that energy. Have any of the newcomers, whether it's offense or defense, really stood out to you so far? Uh, I'll say Fred Ferrier. Uh, he's a receiver that came in. Dude, he brings juice. Great route runner. You know, he catches the ball. So going against him as well, like as well as Barry on the day, like he's taking that step two already early in camp. But, you know, really that whole receiver room has just taken the next step. And you can see it in their route running and their catching and, and their blocking. So, like I said, I'm excited for this spring to go on because we're getting better. When you say like, bring the juice, is that is that – a lot of that, I mean, like not just energy, I mean trash talking, see a trash talker? Not even necessarily just trash talking, but having energy, going out there, encouraging his teammates, lifting his teammates, you know, if he drops the ball, he's going to forget about it, next play mentality. And, you know, you can just see stuff like that. And 
you know, it's starting to show up more and more, and I'm excited to go on with him as, you know, as with the whole team. So, What's the big challenge for a DB working against Brock? A uh, challenge is just he's going to put the ball in some areas that you're not going to think he can, so you just got to keep playing. He's a quarterback as well that's going to help the DB get better because, like I say, he's going to put you in scenarios where it's like, wow, like, how do you get that there? But you just got to keep playing. And, you know, Brock is another dude that's getting better continuously as we go through spring ball. So just continuing to go off him, you know. He's going to lead. He's been doing that. So just keep on going with that. Max, with the offense going no huddle, how much does it help you guys when you guys are going to have to play teams that also go no huddle compared to when you were going up against slower paced offenses and practices the last couple of years? You know, that tempo, it helps. You know, it helps that it's not going to allow the corner to go out there and ask for a break or nothing. You got to line back up. You got to learn how to control, how to, you know, play while you're fatigued because in the game, you're not going to be able to run off the field, do this and that. So, it's putting us in those real life situations that we really need. So getting it early before it fall is good. And I like that the offense has incorporated that. You were talking about putting in the work and it pays off. It paid off for you last year, obviously. And you kind of exploded on the scene with Manderville. But you were consistent all year long. So now you've got expectations you're carrying, I would think. What's it like for you going into this year? Uh, really, it's the same mindset I had going into the last year, just do my job, play fast, bring energy. And as a team, like playing, when we're out there playing cohesively, it keeps me running. So I feel like I don't even have to think about, you know, nothing extra, just go out there and do my job because I know the person next to me is going to do their job as well. So, you know, it's, it's, all, it's all one unit. So, you know, when you ask about expectations, I kind of just feel the same. Just go out there and do my job. You in more of a teaching type role for some of the younger guys now? Oh, I say that, you know, I have kind of stepped into that role and, you know, it it brings me happiness to be able to share my knowledge with somebody younger than me because when I first got here, that's how the older dudes were towards me. So honestly, I just want to, you know, get better with that, get better at, you know, being able to be a mentor figure to the younger folks and just go out there and be able to tell them something. And I go out there and actually do it, not just telling somebody something and I don't go out there and do it myself. You know, I want to be able to put everybody in the best position possible. What's it been like for you to watch Drew kind of rise up those draft boards, knowing what Carrington did last year? It seems like you're kind of next up in that game. You know, seeing Drew go out there and kill the, the combine, kill the pro day, it just makes me so happy because he's another dude that he put in the work and it really is paying off and he's turning ahead. So Drew is getting everything that he deserves. And as, a, as his former teammate, man, it just makes me happy, man. I want to be able to have an impact, you know, be able to leave an impact like how he did and be able to take it to the next level. Like some of the gray heads in this room have been around for a long time. We go back to a time when seven wins would have been caused for a parade down Main Street. Now it's disappointing, mm-hmm. you know. What's that like for the players and how, how hungry does that make you? Because y'all were so close to having a really good season last year. Mm-hmm. Now what's that like? You know, we want to build off last season. So the stuff that prevented us from pulling out those wins last year, Okay, we're taking that, we're watching that, we're correcting that, so we don't go out there and make the same mistakes next season. It's all about, you know, the, the, the margin of error is so small in this day and age, so we gotta just perfect our mistakes, go out there, play fast, play without having to think. That's really what the most important thing is, and just play as one. Was that Coach Stoops' message after today? I think he told us that, you know, 90% of the issues that may have popped up were just fundamental. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, just, Dialing down on the technique, you know, not not getting in the moment and forgetting everything that you've worked on up until that point, being able to stay composed and finish.